Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another video. I introduced you to these beautiful LaFranc Bourgeois paints. I feel so fancy saying that. <laughs> LaFranc Bourgeois, if that's even the right way to say it. Paints, they are a vinyl based, not acrylic based. And I want to try them in acrylic pouring along with some other paints. Now I did try one or two of them, I believe in an acrylic pour and they acted okay. I want to use them most importantly for my base paint. And then I want to use them for my colors mixed in with a couple of other brands. Now these paints are fully opaque. So they're really, really rich and vibrant in color. So I want to see how they look in an actual Dutch pour. Like, will it be more bolder looking? Will the cells and lacing be different? I want to try it all out. So along with those, I'm going to be using some Amsterdam, some deco art, and then I also have here some Glo uh, Global. Global is an Australian paint. You can get that in the United States though. It's through Pixel Paint Designs and I have that link down below. The LaFranc Bourgeois paints are through Blick and the Amsterdam you can get through Blick. Those, all that stuff is down below. And of course you know where to get 24 karat go. So here's my idea. I want to do a split base, half of it being pink, half of it being Prussian blue. But now the pink, I want to lighten up to a really, really light pink, like almost white. So I'm going to lighten it with a little bit of white. That's all I'm going to do. So we're going to do the split base with that. And then I'm not going to do like a Canela Sirocco Dutch pour where you blow through the middle. I want to kind of, I don't know, play with the design and maybe have it only come up half of the canvas. We'll see. Kind of like a, a edge blowout. All right, so that's going to be the base. Colors I have are, now these are in French, so I can't even read them, but it's this is like an ultramarine blue. Then I have red violet. I have blue violet here. Then I have turquoise, the 24 karat gold, and for a little bit of contrast, a beautiful, cool red, nice deep red. And I may actually take that red and um, add a little bit of a darker red to it to get a darker shade. I I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to set up. I'm mixing all of my colors with Floetrol and water, just American Floetrol and water to thin them down. And then we're going to come back and we're going to pour. Before I do get started, I just want to let you know that the August 6th class in Dallas, Texas that I will be teaching, that's an all-day class with just me, is two seats away from being sold out. So if you're interested in that class, you can put a deposit down today, and that information is also in the description. And then the following day, I will be in Erica from Artists to Death, her resin class, helping her with that. So it's kind of a two-day class, uh, but you don't have to take two days. You can just take me and then, or just take her class. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm getting there slowly but surely, people. It's been a long day. All right, so I just pushed the canvas out of the way for a minute. By the way, that's a 15 by 30 gallery canvas. So you should always strain your flow trowel that you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store whoever you can find that sells it for new people. That is what it looks like. You do not want the oil-based one. You want the jug that looks just like mine, okay? Give it a good shake before you mix it or strain it, I should say. But you want to strain it because sometimes there are, you know, coagulated pieces in there. You don't want that mixing into your paint. So get yourself a strainer from the dollar store. 
what I usually do is I strain the entire jug and put it into like empty orange juice bottles that I washed out or, you know, things like that. This way I don't have to do this every time I want to use it. I just do it all at once. It wouldn't be a Tammy video without a mess. Boy, I tell you, I am really on a losing streak these past couple of videos. <laughs> oh, you didn't see the other one. I got another video coming out where I made a t an entire mess on my painting. I was so mad. <laughs> You'll see that one eventually. But I'll tell you. Another thing. Rinse out your strainer as soon as you're done. Don't let it sit because it clogs the little uh, mesh. Clogs the mesh, okay? So that's all strained. Now I can start mixing my colors, which is very simple. Okay, for my base colors, I always save these containers when we get to go like Chinese soups or, you know, I always save them because they come in handy. So for my base colors, I'm going to need the most of those. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll show you here. Now these are very pigmented too, so... I'm going to just can cover the can bottom of this container with paint and hope that that's enough. I'm going to slowly add this in just to make sure it doesn't clump. Even though it seems smooth like a soft body paint, it can still clump on you. So just making sure that it doesn't. Plus, I haven't experimented a lot with these paints. I just know that they brush they brush paint amazing. So I'm hoping that they produce a nice, vibrant, and rich pour painting. So now that I know it's not going to clump, I'm going to go ahead and fill this up. And if I want to darken it a little bit, I could just add a little couple of drops of black and darken it up. So let's go ahead and do that. I have some fluid carbon black from gold in here. Put about 10 drops in there. That's what I'm looking for, a really, really dark, dark, dark blue. Almost like a Payne's gray, but with a more, more of a blue tone to it. Okay, so that's how I'm doing my base, okay? For the, as I said, the uh, light pink I want to create because I don't have a really light pink. I'm just going to put some of this in there first. And then, before I even add the flow trawl, I'll add some white. Maybe I'll do like a 50-50 mix. How obnoxious is that? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So let's do a... Uh, a little bit like that. See what we end up with. Okay, and so for my colors, same exact thing, guys. All you have to do is put a little bit of color in the cup. If you put too much paint in, 
all you're going to have to do is add a little more water. Okay? It's not going to hurt anything, though. So, again, I just squeezed it until it covered the bottom. I'm not measuring. I'll fill this up halfway now that I know these paints do not clump. Okay? Give it a mix. And because it's the same brand as my base paint, they're all going to be the same consistency. Okay? Once in a great while, you'll get a color that is a little bit thicker just because that's the color that it is. Um, how it's made. Some pigments are naturally heavier than others, like titanium. But that's it. Now, I like for my Dutch pour, when I pour the paint on the surface and it disappears, the trace disappears right away. Here, let me zoom in here a little bit so I can use my flash and show you. Watch the surface, not the drip that's coming off of the stick. See how it disappears right away, the trace? That's what I like for my Dutch pours. You can go a little tiny bit thinner if you want to, but this usually is a good consistency for me, which on the consistency chart is a number four. So I'm gonna mix up all of my paints and then when I come back, we'll get started. I apologize if you're seeing a little bit of shadow here. It's nighttime, so it's unavoidable. Uh, so everything's mixed up. The first thing I'm gonna do is put down my uh, base coat and I'm gonna just pour some paint on and blow it around with the blow dryer. Not tilt or use a spatula or anything like that. I find it easiest to do it this way. Uh, I will be using my one of my old dryers tonight, Mr. Humphrey Blogart. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. Let me get my gloves on here and we will begin. So I'm gonna be working from this direction up. So this is kind of the bottom of the painting right here. Let's start with that. So just take your time and spread the paint out on the canvas with the blow dryer. You know, there there's no rush to it. It's not going to start drying. As long as you continue to move that blow dryer, even if it's on high heat or hot heat, it, the paint is not going to start to crust over. That's the thing with the blow dryers and the heat setting. I know a lot of people are concerned about having cool settings. I do not have any cool setting air dryers or hair dryers, I should say. And um, you just got to keep moving it around. You can't concentrate in one area. If you were to stay in one area, then you could have problems. But as long as you move around freely, you'll be fine. Again, I want to apologize for that shadow. I know it's annoying. Unfortunately, in life, I'm very busy. My grandson and my youngest daughter are both out of school. So, you know, I have to make videos when I can. And sometimes I have to do them at night. And it isn't the best time, but you will see this in the full daylight. And it comes out gorgeous. So let's talk about these paints. They behaved really, really well. They're very creamy and very opaque, as I mentioned earlier. And I have used these for brush painting, and it's almost like your paintbrush turns into a paint roller. They have a really cool, like, and I don't want to say bumpy texture. It's like when you paint your walls in your house, you can feel a little bit of texture in them. That's what these paints feel like. And they're, they're just, I love them. I absolutely love them. And I'm going to actually go to Blick and see if I could get the full line, all the colors. So 
So once you're done blowing the paint on the surface, you want to make sure to get your edges done also. I'll tell you this much. I'm so used to my little blow dryer that I had a very hard time working with that. So I'm actually switching back to my old, my little dryer. I haven't used it in so long that I'm just not comfortable blowing paint around. I got it all over my wall and like, holy crap. So I'm gonna use Little Flow for now. And I'm gonna start using that bigger dryer a little more. I'm gonna do like puddle-ish style pours, we'll say. So I'm going to put down Let's start with some of this blue. I'm just going to kind of randomly place it all over the place. Look at how beautiful that blue is. Wow. So now I'm just going to take all of the colors and kind of just pour them around randomly in that blue section. Um, I did mix up some of the Lafranc Bourgeois White to add a little bit of contrast in there. And uh, once we get all of the colors put down, we're going to blow them out now. It's important when you're using gold to always try to get them in between some color that gold will create some amazing lacing and cells. So that's why, you know, I put that down kind of soon and then started pouring colors on top of it. It doesn't need to be fully covered in color. It just needs to have some color on top of it. And look at that red. That red is bananas. Let's torch it up and see what it looks See that speckling that happened there? That's air bubbles in the paint because I just just mixed it. Thankfully, I'm blowing it around so you won't see that. But if you ever torch your painting and you get those speckles, that's what that's from. Now, when I blow these paints, I'm going to blow one way and I'll probably pause and think about what I'm doing, okay? Wow. That, look at that. Wow. I got excited right there. You're not really seeing what's happening with the cells and lacing, but I got excited off of that first blow because I knew what was going to happen here, that we were going to get some extreme cells lacing like, I, I could just tell, after you've done this for so long, you could tell when paints are going to behave badly or when they're going to create something amazing, and they surely did. So I just kind of, remember, we're not doing like a, a traditional Dutch pour where you're blowing the paints down the center of the canvas. We are more trying to blend the colors together on the inner part of the edge there and then blow a few petals outwards into that negative space. So when it comes time for you to try that, just remember that inner area there where you see me going all different directions, you're just kind of trying to blend the paints together. So there's, you know, a little bit of a flow and the, the colors are jiving nicely together, but you don't have to remember like the traditional Dutch pour movement. Um, I guess I'm trying to say that like there's really not a pattern to follow just bl blend them whichever way you want to go the edge though towards the negative space there you want to concentrate on what the petals look like like right now I'm going to blow it into that negative space so I'm watching where that's going plus I always like to use my airbrush so I don't concentrate a lot on those petal, the, the shape of them, because I know I'm going to alter them with the airbrush after also.
I'm about to lose it. You will not even believe what's going on in this painting. I gotta get my airbrush out. These colors are so vibrant and the cells, wow. Oh, I cannot wait to give you a close up of this. So now I'm gonna play with the airbrush just to do a couple of little tweaks and, oh child, let me tell you something. I am having a hot flash. Trust me when I say wait for me to do the close up. It is so much more impressive and the daylight view. I just couldn't believe like the gels, gels, the cells were so big and juicy looking and the colors were just so deep and rich and vibrant. And again, video, lighting, all of that plays a fact into you not being able to see the true glory of these colors. So wait until the end. I'll show you the daylight view and hopefully we'll get a better idea of what they look like. Just a few little wispy edges and then we will be all done. I'm going to just use my little clay tool here to just kind of play with the paints a little bit N nothing major okay so I don't want to mess up what I have going on here and obviously you don't have to do anything like this I'm just kind of playing around I always look at a Dutch pour as a flower so I make like little vine looking things a lot of times in it. Um, I really should be using a napkin, not a rubber glove. <laughs> I thought I had a napkin in my hand. But uh, yeah, I always think, see it as floral. So I like to add little wispy things in like that and have some fun with it. It just seems over so quick, you know? want it to last a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to finish this up here and then I will give you a close up. I won't bore you with this. Um, holy cow. Th this is just fantastic. All right. Ready for a close up again. It's going to be, if I were to hang it on the wall, I would hang it in this orientation. So this would be the bottom, that would be the top. But check this out. As far as effects go, this has to be the best effects I got on a Dutch pour ever, using those paints mixed with the other brands. As far as color goes, there is no paint out there that is competing with these Lafranc Bourgeois paints. These are absolutely magnificent. And I'm talking about two paints specifically. <laughs> and let me clarify that statement before somebody jumps down my throat. It is that I have used a ton, and I mean a ton of fine quality acrylic paints, just cheap paints, every paint you can think of I've used. And I've never seen depth, or I should say, not depth, coverage like that, like the opacity of them. They are absolutely gorgeous. This, the drip-offs on the table, gorgeous to make some skins. I, I mean, I'm very, very happy with these. Here is a little bit of flash to show you the little bit of shimmer from the 24 karat gold, but let's check on them now in the morning. All right, so it's the next day. You got daylight now, so you can really see the colors here. Um, eh, again, it has not moved much. The effects have all stayed. It is probably three quarters of the way dry, but, um, not dry all the way in the center, but you can see it's going to dry fine. I mean, you're going to be seeing this one with a nice coat of 
chaos resin pretty soon. This this is just really pretty to me. I love the effects. I love that red, that cool red. And those blues are just phenomenal. I mean they're all they're all beautiful colors. Don't get me wrong, but it, it's just yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> My wall is very angry at me, though. <laughs> These things happen. So anyway, thank you so very, very much for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please click like. Please comment. Please subscribe. And share the video with somebody you know that may be bored or needs to get out of your hair a little bit, give them something to do with acrylic pouring, turn them on to my channel. And, uh, or even, you know, show the videos to your friends and you guys get together and pour some paint. I cannot mention this enough, how much art in general, no matter what you do, is a great, great stress reliever. It is great for people like me that suffer from depression. It just takes you away, takes you out of your mind into a colorful world and makes you feel better. Once this piece dries, I will coat it with the resin two times. Like I said, I will show you that and it will be for sale. 15 by 30 gallery canvas. Gorgeous. I love you all. And until the next time, until we meet again. Happy pouring.